Picture-in-Picture Picture Studio, or also known as PIP Studio, is a very popular product for our Casablanca video editors. This program allows you to place one image on top of another and adjust its size, shape, border, or shadow, or even give it a custom motion path. PIP Studio does work in the Transitions menu, and to support it, you do need to be running version 1.8 or above, or any of the Smart Edit versions. To install PIP Studio, simply left click on Install Product. When this menu opens up, then you'll insert your All Software Smart Card or your All Software CD and allow it to read. And then alphabetically in the listing here, you'll scroll down until you find PIP Studio and then click on Activate. A keypad will come up asking you for your 12 digit code that you might have obtained from your local dealer or from Macro System. Enter in your 12 digit code and hit OK and your PIP Studio will become active and then available in your Transitions menu. Before we go over to Transitions, we're going to go ahead and set up some scenes for use here in Picture in Picture Studio. So down in the scene bin here, we have a couple of wedding shots that we're going to reference to put up on the storyboard. And it's important for the placement of the scenes on the storyboard in how it transcribes over into use in the Picture in Picture Studio program. So the first thing we need to do is set up what is our background scene, or the scene that will have your PIPs placed on top of it. That's going to be this first shot here we have of the bride and the bridesmaid getting prepared for photos. I'm just going to trim this scene using our trim button down to an exact amount of four seconds. And then add this scene to the storyboard. The next shot in the scene bin here is also trimmed to that same length. This is just a person signing the guest book. We're going to put this up as a picture in picture on top of this bride shot. So we need to add this shot behind. So the shot when you use PIP Studio, the shot that's first in the series is what becomes your background scene. The second shot is what becomes your foreground or picture in picture sized scene. Now we're going to go over to the main menu or use your hotkey to come over to transitions. Once you open up transitions, alphabetically in the list here, again select PIP Studio and add your transitional effect to the storyboard. The first thing we need to do, of course, is change your timer. Remember in transitions that we always default to one second. So if we wanted this picture in picture to last the whole length or make the two scenes merge completely on to one another, we do need to set this time. If we left it alone right now, what would happen is we'd see three seconds of the bride shot, cut one second of the picture in picture effect, cut back out to the remaining three seconds of the guest book. So to make them merge, we're going to make sure that we set this for the maximum length of the shortest scene. In this case, four seconds is our shortest scene. Now we can left click on the Launch PIP Studio. Here you're going to see what's last defaulted that you loaded in with Picture in Picture if you hadn't been using it before. What we see is we're going to break down some of these menus for you down in the lower corner is the main PIP menu. The first thing we have, of course, is the preview effect. This is just going to give you a compressed preview of the current effect the picture in picture has and your background scene. The archive button allows you to load or save or delete any customizable settings that you put into this picture in picture effect that you might want to use on other PIPs in other projects or other parts of the storyboard. This little hot button down here allows you to pop up the version of Picture in Picture Studio and the development. And then the little hot key down in the corner, this little two squares with the FX, is your button to exit out of PIP Studio. Normally, if you were to right click, as I'm right clicking right now on the screen, you would back yourself out of a program. This hot key is the option that we have to actually get out of the program, so you don't have to worry about fumbling out or right clicking yourself out of here. Let's talk about the middle section here. This is actually affecting the picture in picture that you're currently working with. First is shape. Here we have a different list of types of shapes that we can work with. You can use a square, maybe star shapes, diamond shapes, heart, elliptic, circle, rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and leave this set to rectangle. You can see we have two buttons here for position and size, so if I left click on position, this allows you to use your trackball to grab and left click and drop down your position of this picture in picture. 
The size button says what kind of size do you want for this picture in picture. And maybe I want to squeeze this down a little more to fit it a little more down in the screen so we're not cutting up into the underscan areas of your video. We also have the choice here to add a border around your picture in picture. When you left click on border, you have a choice of size and blur. Setting your size to zero, of course, will make it have no border. And activating the slider and increasing it in real time gives you a preview of what the border size or thickness would look like. I'm going to go for a real thin border here, around four. And you can actually blur the edge of this border if you wanted to. So I'm going to increase the blur a little bit. And obviously, if we increase the border size here, we'd see more of a blur than we would with a very thin border edge. We also have the choice of color. So you can left click on color. And this is the color wheel from the Smart Edit 4 version. So if you want to reference the Smart Edit 4 training video to see how this color wheel works, you may want to do that. But basically, here we have a spectrum of colors to choose from. And you just left click and remove the slider here to choose a spectrum of color. And then within this spectrum, you allow these two points to meet to create the color that you wish to use. An alpha slider is available to make it slightly transparent. Taking it all the way down to zero would mean you have no color in the border. Taking it up at 50% would mean you see halfway through the color, or 100% would make it solid. I'm going to leave it set to 100% and hit OK. Now we can see we have a purplish border around this picture in picture. We can always use these arrows. These are commonly used buttons in the Casablanca editing software to move the menu up or down. Or this little box within a box is a minimize tool. Left clicking on this little button down here, these little black bars indicate the main PIP menu. The last option here in this section is called shadow. When you left click on shadow, you can see we already have a default shadow casting off of this picture in picture. But it's basically giving you a virtual light source from a direction based on this button here. So if I want to have the light source coming from the upper left corner, I can switch here. and Now we can see the lights pretending to come off the PIP and cast the shadow off in this direction. You can add distance to how far the shadow is going to cast off of the PIP. You can left click to set your slider. Do you wish to have a blur on this shadow or not? If you set it to zero, you'll have no blur on the shadow. If you increase the slider of the blur farther, then you'll see that the shadow starts to blend in with your background scene, making it much softer. We also have a choice of color. What color of the shadow do you want to use? Commonly, black is probably what you'll be using for the most part. So we'd make these two pointers here meet in the darker edge of the color wheel. And you might make it slightly transparent. So I'm going to set my alpha slider here to somewhere around the 60s or 70%. So we have a little bit of see-through here, and I might soften a little more by increasing the blur. You can return back to the PIP Studio menu with this hot key here. And then we have this little grouping over here as the last choice to work with. First, we have the PIP function of working with a single PIP. You can see that when I switch to double one, we're now going to see the background scene become a new picture-in-picture -picture on the screen. And here, we'll open up the background menu. So if you want the two scenes on the storyboard to both be a picture in picture, when you use them without using the scene layering button inside PIP Studio, you must use a still background scene as the scene behind the two picture in pictures. In this case, when I click on background, this opens up your all too familiar image pool menu, where you can choose your product type or choose your type of image that you want to use. So in this case, I might come down here to Split X Wedding as a reference. And we can see that there's some different background imagery here for uh, wedding videos. And I might choose this uh, book with the cross here and use these PIPs to place on top of it. Basically, the double one and the double two reference which picture in picture you're working with. In this case, double one, when I click on position or size, I'm actually talking about the first scene on the storyboard, or the background scene. If I switch to double two, I'm now referencing, when I move this PIP around, the second scene on the storyboard. So I can take each one of these and position them 
and maybe come back to the double one and adjust its shape and its information as well as its border and shadow so you can do different stuff to each one of these picture in pictures. If you want to switch it back so you're working with only one picture in picture which is what I recommend and use your scene layering button so you can do multiple images in your background instead of have a still here's where we're going to do this. We're going to work with one picture in picture and apply an effect to it. Here is this effect button down below to say how do you want this picture in picture to come on the screen and off the screen. When I left click on effect here we have the choices to say how is this picture in picture going to come in or onto the screen and how is it going to come off or out on the screen. Right now our in is set for a fade and this is how long the fade will last approximately one second. The out will just have a quicker fade out for half a second. We can now click on the preview button and the preview will give you a compressed preview. Don't use it for accuracy, just use it for motion, but it will give you a compressed preview of what's happening with your picture in picture as an effect. If I don't want to use these controls, here we have a different choice of saying, well, maybe we want to have it instead fade out. We want to have it move, move a direction or zoom a different direction or just cut off. The other option down here is called custom. And this is where you actually get to create your own custom path so that this picture in picture can move along a 2D motion to come on or off the screen. I'm going to set up to have the out point have its own custom path. We do need to give it a fade time or it's going to happen very quickly. So under fade time, I'm going to set this to around two and a half seconds, which means this is going to have a fade in for one second and only a brief pause time before the out effect occurs. On the in, I might even give it a new in effect. Instead of using fade, I might just actually have this move to the right. And right now we can hit preview to see what's happening. There it moves to the right. And then the custom path has not been set, so it's still doing a fade as a default. So I'm going to click on out. And here when you choose custom, this is when you actually might be using the edit effect controls. So I'm going to left click on edit effect. Under edit effect, it's going to look at having a starting point and an ending point depending on which effect you're using, whether you're starting as your in, so you can see here's the path of moving to the right, or the out, which is set for a fade. If I want to, I can click on insert to insert a new key point on this effect for out. Anytime you click on insert, it's going to drop in a new key point and you simply left click on the key point to grab control of it. If you actually want to see what's happening with the picture in picture, you can have this PIP button activated so that you can actually see the PIP effect. If you want, you can turn it off so that you only see the pointers in this case. But I think it's a lot easier to have it on, so I'm going to leave picture in picture on. To work with these key points, basically the very large one here, this large stop sign one, is actually your starting point. This smaller one with this different type of insignia is actually your ending point. Simply left click on one of these key points takes control of it, and if you left click on it again it becomes blue so that you can bend or move it around on the screen. Left click lets you drop it back down. You can also use the position button to do this. So if I grab the ending point here and I click position, it's the same thing as if I left clicked on the active key point and allowed it to move around manually. Kind of like a rubber banding effect here. This little slider here lets you go to each key point and you can see that you go from there to the middle one to the last one. And you can also see that this PIP seems to disappear by the time we get to the ending key point. Well, that may be because there is actually a fade loaded in here under the custom path. So what I can do is I can click on our last key point here or use our slider to go to the last key point or you can always use these little arrows to go from one point to the next. But I'm going to focus on the last key point here on the out effect. I'm going to go into edit. And here you can see on edit under these points we've been given a transparency. So what I'm going to do is increase this percentage of transparency so that now our picture-in-picture picture is a solid 
You can also even adjust your size if you wanted to, to raise or lower the size of the picture picture, and then hit OK. And now every time you come along the path here, we can see that we can click on each one of these and our picture in picture now remains at 100%. If you want to add more points to the path, simply highlight one of your points and click on insert and it'll insert a point between the one you had selected and the one after it. As you can see, it's dropped one in here. Now commonly in a lot of Casablanca software, these are actually called key points. Here in PIP Studio, we're actually calling these uh, waypoints, more for uh, bending parameters of this particular point in the path. And when you insert one of those, you'll see that you have these choices to turn on these sliders to activate a size increase or a size decrease or have a transparency activated at that particular waypoint. Now we can kind of watch our preview for the out. Now it's going to come to the right, move down, shrink, and pop back up to full size. If you ever wish to delete a key point, you can always click on just highlight it and hit delete. And now you'll be back to one of these three key points or waypoints that we're using with the PIP Studio. Again, we can come into edit and choose to adjust the size or the alpha on each one of these if we wanted to. Once you're done, you can hit OK to close it and hit OK to close your effect path and then left click on transitions to return yourself back out to the transitions menu. When we hit create, this will build our PIP effect. You can see it's doing its custom path that we gave it a, a motion path there. And here's the final result in full screen. Now here's where if you wanted to add more than one picture in picture on the screen, you might want to do this by using your scene layering button. Now that I've rendered the effect, I can click on scene and choose to make a layer back to our scene bin using your effect button. This is the most powerful button in your Casablanca editors, this scene button. The scene button is something that comes with the Avio Pro or the Claro Pro or is available on all the other Casablanca models. Simply choose effect in this case because the effect lasts the whole length of the two scenes and hit OK. When I return to the edit menu, here is our new layered scene, the PIP Studio effect with the picture in picture and its movement to the right and custom path out. Now I can add that scene up to the storyboard and follow that scene with another clip in the scene bin, which is a shot of the reception footage in this case and add that up to the storyboard. Now when I go to Transitions, I can add PIP Studio to the affected scenes on the storyboard and increase your length to the shortest scene involved, in this case a three second shot of the reception footage. Now what you're going to notice is that we have four seconds of the background scene, that layered PIP affected scene, and three seconds of this reception footage, which means that we're going to see one second of this background scene before this cake shot comes on the screen, which may be something you intended. If not, and you wanted these to merge completely, then you might have wanted to find a scene in the scene bin that is of equal length to your background scene on the storyboard, so that way they completely merge together. Now I'm going to go back into Launch PIP Studio, and you can see that it's defaulting to the original picture-in-picture -picture effect we last put in there but I'm going to take this off and actually move this one down into the lower right area here. You can always use your position and size button. You'll notice that the position little menu down at the bottom gives you a grid placement for these PIPs and size gives you a respective size approximate for pixels. You can use those as references to try and adjust these to match up if you need to. I'm actually going to change the shape on this particular picture in picture and get rid of its border. That way I can actually adjust its individual size and make it larger and maybe take off a little bit of this shadow on it. So what we get is this kind of small hazed picture in picture of this reception footage with a cake. And I might even switch this to elliptic so I can see a little bit more of this. 
and maybe soften the border a little more. Now you can see it a little more. We just had it so soft with the blur, it was just literally blending into that background scene. So now I can come back out here and I can determine do I want to have an effect with this picture in picture. Well sure, I might come into effect and set the in and the out to just have basic fades. So that this picture in picture has a quick fade in and you can see that the fade timer only goes as far as it can because the out had already been set to use a larger time of fade time. So I'm going to set each one of these to kind of a low 20 frames of a second here and hit OK and then hit preview. And now you'll see that one's coming in, in fades this picture in picture, and it has its custom path out because I forgot to set the out point. So I'm going to go back to effect, out, take off the custom and set this to fade. I could always check under preview here, that might have been a little easier instead of coming back out of the menu. But you can always use those preview menus here to do a real quick check of the effect motion for its compressed preview. Now I can come back out of transitions and hit create to build now my second PIP. When that's done, now I can click on scene and this time I might choose effect plus scenes saying take the effect, which is three seconds, plus the two scenes that are involved and build that as a layer in my scene bin. And if I want to leave this effect up on the storyboard so I can go back and change it, I would not want to replace it on the storyboard, so I'd hit no. And now when I come back to my scene in the scene bin, here's our second PIP studio layer in full screen preview, move to the right, custom path, and our cake comes in with a little bit of that one second delay because we had the picture in picture come up a little later on that background scene on the storyboard. So you can see PIP Studio can be a great way to weave and blend multiple images on the screen at the same time. It can take some practice with the scene layering button and a little creativity, but it will really be a great tool to add to your productions. Check out some great examples of our PIP Studio sampler commercial on the website at www.macrosystem.us. One tech tip about PIP Studio is that if you use long scenes and a long effect up here, you may find that you start losing some of your audio of the background scene. This is because we are merging two scenes together in a transitional effect, so the two audio samples are also merging. So you may find that this audio seems to ramp down as the audio in the second scene seems to ramp up. The best solution for this, especially if you're focusing on just the background scene's audio, is to find the original scene that you are using as your layer. In this case, here's the original montage clip of this wedding shot. And what we'll use is a filter that's common in all Casablancas, is here under Special. We'll use the filter called Scene to Sample, that's found north of the white line. This filter takes the scene in your scene bin and makes an audio copy of the original scene's audio to move to the audio bin. There's no controls here, it's as easy as hitting OK. Then returning to the main menu, we can go right to Audio Mix and make sure we select the scene on the storyboard, that's our last layer series here, and highlight one of our open tracks of audio and simply add the original track's audio underneath the same starting point of the scene on the storyboard, that's your background scene. And using your correction tools, as you've been seeing in the Smart Edit 3 training video, or any of your tutorial guides for audio, that we can do a correction during one of the samples so that the original becomes muted. That way, all we have to do is hit Create, and now we'll have this original audio of this scene in the background stay on without having any fades or dips. So again, remember that when you do a merge between two scenes as a transition, it may affect your audio, and you may have to use your Scene Sample button to put a copy of the audio of the original scene right underneath your new layered clip and mute the original audio of those layers. That way your audio stays intact.